looking for it. Good afternoon. This is the Shoveltown Scoop, and I'm Carrie Rapolo. We are going to kick off today's show with some school information. Just a reminder to parents and students that Monday, October 12th is Columbus Day, and there will be no school. And then also tomorrow, Thursday, October 8th at 6.30 will be the school committee meeting taking place over at the Simmons Lecture Hall at the high school. Their agenda is posted to the town's website. You can go to eason.ma.us to find out what they are going to be discussing on their agenda. And then speaking of the school committee, coming out of Monday night's Board of Selectmen meeting, Superintendent Dr. Keogh gave yet another presentation to the public and to the Board of Selectmen on the school budget and the needs for the upcoming fiscal year. This is in regards to the potential audit the community is asking for and the Proposition 2.5 override that will be discussed and voted on at the upcoming special town meeting on November 16th. Here is a short video of his presentation outlining the current spending of Easton Public Schools. So our $38 million budget basically breaks out into these percentages. So 79.1% goes to salaries, um, 0.9% uh, uh, goes to professional development, 2.5% to equipment and supplies, which includes technology, 3.1% to regular education buses, 4.9% to maintenance, 5% to out of district, that's the OOD, tuitions, 2.1% to out of district transportation, 1.5% to sped services, and 08 to district wide central admin expenses. So the question really becomes, how much scrutiny do we need and how much, um, how much can you get from an audit or from a more in-depth analysis? So in response to that, Selectman Kevin McIntyre asked Dr. Keogh the question about how many audits do actually take place um, for the school committee in the budget and across which department. So here is a quick video of that. Okay. And do you have a number as to how many audits currently take place within separate little compartments of the school department? Um, an exact number? No. Off the top of my head, but I think we could gather it. We okay. could definitely gather that. And that was my attempt, really. That was our attempt to, to look at just, well, what have we had audited? So then the other side of that coin would be what is not being audited, I guess. And so would, would that be the same answer that you'd need to, to dig that up, or unless you can tell me now what well, is I mean, not? there are things that we, we definitely don't, uh, we have not had audited. Yeah. Well, I think you have to lie. <coughs> pointing out a couple areas that we could potentially take a higher look at. Right. Jackie, would you do me a favor and just grab that microphone and then you could pass so it to them? I think what Fred was saying was that we had a slide that talked about the ones that we would be willing to take a higher yeah. look at. And we really went into this process trying to be thoughtful yeah. about that. It was technology, PD, and uh, transportation. And then regular transportation, mm -hmm. right, which we just recently went through with the, uh, with the bus contract. The question was really what percent of our overall budget is it? And would you get enough bang for the buck? So Dr. Keogh also went on to say that the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education listed Easton as 26 from the bottom in per pupil expenditures. Here's a quick video of him explaining that. It's all uh, important for us to consider. And I do think that rankings matter. I do think that they can be held against us in the college application process. I do think that large classes uh, deprive kids of individualized instruction and focused attention, and that a child in need of social-emotional support, which we all know is a growing issue in our society, is less likely to receive that support in a large class. It also has been proven that teacher morale suffers in schools with larger class sizes. If you would like to watch the Board of Selectmen meeting along with Dr. Keogh's presentation, you can do so at our website, which is eastoncat.org. All right, so on to some Easton road maintenance information. The DPW was working on some roadway resurfacing. The work will take place on Prospect Street between Bay Road and Purchase Street. The construction is estimated to take approximately one week and is subject to delays from weather. 
If you would like to get in contact with the DPW, you can call them or email them. Their information is listed here. Or you can also go to the town's Facebook page and just search for the town of Easton um, of Massachusetts, and there is information listed there. All right, so now that the flu season is quickly approaching, the town of Easton is running a seasonal flu clinic for the residents of our town. Here are some dates and times and locations for you and your family to go ahead and receive the flu vaccine. The injectable version is available for children ages three and older, and there will be a limited amount of doses of the flu mist for children uh, ages two to 18. You can always call the Board of Health if you have any questions. Their phone number is 508-230-0620. All right, so we have some uh, senior news here. The Council on Aging wants to remind seniors in our community that every second Thursday of each month is the Triad Meetup with Sergeant McAvoy of the Easton Police Department. Triad is a collaboration of the Easton Police Department, the Bristol County Sheriff's Department, and the local senior citizens community of Easton. Okay, so also uh, the DPW is looking for snowplow contractors for the upcoming winter season. That's for 2015 and 2016. You can find your application um, either at the DPW at 130 Center Street, or you can also download it on the town's website. Again, that's easton.ma.us. Okay, so on to some government news. On Tuesday, the primary elections took place for precincts one and two right here in Easton. This is to replace Senator Thomas P. Kennedy after he passed away in July. Michael Brady, a Democrat out of Brockton, won the initial election, and then he faces off against Deal and Raduk in November's general election. I believe that'll be on November 3rd. Okay, so on to our town government news in Easton here. I mentioned earlier that on Monday, the Board of Selectmen met and had a very full agenda. First, they met with the Rent Control Board and discussed the petition for rent reduction at the Easton Mobile Home Park, which is located at 305 Turnpike Street. Attorney Paul Haverty mentioned that the board has enough information to reduce the monthly rent to $200 as it falls under the legislation of issues uh, to look at when it comes to failure to perform ordinary repair and maintenance. Here is a clip of Dan Smith discussing that. Yeah, there's been a a tremendous amount of information provided by by both sides, both the the renters and the the ownership. I firmly believe that there should be a reduction in rent. I'm happy to propose a number to the group if you guys want to consider it. Um, I believe the rent should not be reduced by but to $200 a month. And it is currently, I I didn't review the back, is it currently three? No. It's currently four. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, And that's predicated on our own direct experiences with the developer its council, its project management team, its engineering team, and feel firmly that it's originally, I believe, it should have been a modest amount. I believe there's a a reflection there that dictates a greater justification for a reduction there for the renters. All right, so after that discussion, the uh, Board of Selectmen then went on to discuss the town and school committee audit where a citizen's petition was filed. This was in response to the community's buzz over Proposition 2 and a half override and the need for that. Um, here is a clip of town administrator David Colton discussing the town budget, the concern over the reserves, and some other concerns he has over spending about $70,000 on that audit. Here's the clip. As we go down this road for Proposition 2 and a half override, if that is the consensus that emerges in this community, if people want to go in that direction, we must address the reserves first. It would be lying to people to say, vote for an override to fund the departmental budgets without funding the reserve first, because all that's going to do is, may, is delay that day when we need to retrench, on, retrench once more and make those cuts that we'd be facing anyways. Um, and there's a way to do it that I could talk about another time. So I came to the conclusion that I can't support an appropriation uh, for the audit. We're talking about a $70,000 to $100,000 appropriation, money that could be used to, for 
the fire department's capital request, the DPW's capital request, the police department's capital request, the school department's capital request. Money that could, if we don't want to spend it on capital, could be put back in the bank and save it for a rainy day. Um, we know what the problem is. The problem is the reserves. Let's fix that problem before we start going looking for other ones. Um, I, I think I don't believe it's in the in the financial interest of the town, the fiscal interest of this town, to pursue this audit at this time. All right, so in response to that, Selectman Kevin McIntyre asked some questions regarding the potential audit and current credit ratings for the town of Easton. Here's a short clip of that. Any idea of whether or not an operational audit would have a positive effect on our credit rating, bond rating? Not directly. I mean, I suppose it would depend on what the findings were, but the fact of doing one wouldn't, wouldn't affect the uh, credit rating calculation one way or the other as far as I know. So it's sounding to me like this $70,000 appropriation mm -hmm. is going to tank our bond rating? Is that what I'm hearing? That's not what I'm saying. From, from my sensitivity right now, Kevin, is that where we utilize and staff and directed David to tell department heads what to do. So if it's, if it's a, an audit, it's an audit, but are we cutting off our nose and spite our face given the fact that we have this debt service credit rating on the long term that's, you know, bordering double A minus two, fall to moderate. And it's something that I've felt pretty passionate about for a while now, but to see what First Southwest came back with just a couple days ago it's, there's a greater sense of urgency. There is a greater sense of urgency. All right, so if you'd like to watch the Board of Selectmen meeting along with the Rent Control Board, we have it up on our website. That's www.eastoncat.org. All right, so um, as you can see what's scrolling above me, we've got some events listed up here at the top of your screen. Um, and also just looking ahead over the next few days, uh, October 8th, that's tomorrow on Thursday, the Governor Ames Estate, along with the partnership with the Natural Resources Trust of Easton, is hosting a series about tree care and maintenance, um, helping to survive the winter, tree IDing, and much more. That is from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. It will cost $10 for members and $15 for non-members. You can contact Kelsey over there at the uh, trustees. There's her emails listed. And then on Monday, uh, that's Columbus Day. The Children's Museum is in Easton is hosting their 11th annual Play for Kids Golf Tournament over at the Easton Country Club. They'll be from 1.30 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, if you're not a golfer, you can stick around. And for $25 per person, you can enjoy raffles, a family-style dinner, and some fireworks. All proceeds support the Children's Museum and Easton's outreach to needy and underserved children. So there's something to do for uh, Columbus Day. All right, and you can save the date. October 17th from 9 to 2 p.m. is the Electronic and Appliance Recycle Day over at the Covenant Congregational Church in Northeaston. Some of the items you can bring to the parking lot is computer towers, scanners, VCR, copiers, DVD, and stereo equipment, just to name a few. There's a small fee for recycling these items. If you have any questions, you can contact Dennis Wood. His phone number is 508-277-7513. And then um, on October 17th, same day as the DJ Dream Fund 5K, 10K, that starts at 9.30 in the morning. That's going to be held over at Parkview, and you can go to djdreamfund.org for more information. All right, so that should do it for this week's Shovel Town Scoop. You can check us out online at eastoncat.org. You can watch us on television channels 9, 97, 98 for Comcast or 22, 23, 24 for Verizon. Hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time.